All right, today in the shop, we have a John Deere 310G backhoe. It's overheating, thermostat is bad. I did do a video which is uh, a little bit below this if you want to check it out on how to test your thermostat. But this one does need a thermostat, and I'm going to show you how to do it. First, let's take a look at the parts. Thermostat right here, part number DZ120917. There's a bypass valve on there, which I'll show you when we get to working on it. R123226. We have our gasket, of course, for the thermostat housing, which is part number R502814. Okay, let's get into it. It's our machine right here. You can see it is the 310G. We got the hood popped already to pop the hood. In case those of you that need to know, you'll see that little handle right there. You just want to push that in and pull up on the hood, and that'll pop it. Our thermostat housing is going to be all you got to do is follow this top radiator hose down, and you will see the housing right there. Which, once you have the hood popped, you come into the side here, and it gives you a better look at it. All right, that's our top radiator hose coming down. We have a bolt here. This is your bypass valve. This tube running in the side here. There's a bolt behind that. So this bypass valve is going to have to come off as well. So you're going to have a bolt behind the bypass and you have a bolt here. These are the two bolts holding it on. This bolt here, once your engine is cooled down, or you can do it when it's hot, but I would recommend standing back. You would take this bolt out first. And that is going to shoot out antifreeze like a rocket. So stand back. A drip pan, I don't know if it's going to help you because it's pretty much going to squirt everywhere. But you can put a couple pans on the ground if you want to try to capture the majority of it. First thing we're going to do is come onto the top of the machine here. This is the bypass valve that's running into the side of the housing that you saw down there. You're going to want to get an 18 millimeter I've tried a three-quarter. It was a little bit too loose. 18 millimeter fit real nice. And uh, for sake of speeding up the video, I already loosened it. And that's your bolt right there. That little clamp's going to have to come off because we do need to slide this bypass valve out of the way. Now, the way to get that out of the way is get yourself a little pry bar like this. But be careful. You don't want to break these things. And you can see the bypass valve is going into the side of the housing here. So you want to get your pry bar in there. I'm trying to do this with one hand. And you just want to pry ever so slightly. Just go back and forth with this. And you see it starting to pull out there? All right. And it will slowly come out of that housing there. Just like that. And you can see there's still some fluid coming out of there. And I had already... Uh, drained it by this plug is already but it looks like we still got a little bit coming out but you just want to get that valve all the way out of there because you need to get to that bolt behind it and you should be able to just pull on it just like that see now it's separated from there and i have a uh, clear shot getting that bolt off of there that grommet that you saw in the package is actually going to go right in here and we'll get to that later. Right now, we're gonna start by taking off this bolt and this bolt. And those bolts are gonna be a 5 8 I got a nice long extension on my uh, gun here. Could probably raise this boom up a little bit to give you a little bit more room to get in here, but just for safety purposes, and I am here on my own. I got enough room to get in here. I'm little. And uh, just gonna back out those 5 8 bolts. There's two. Should be able to get them by hand now. Now you want to keep note that this top bolt is going to be longer than this bottom bolt. That's the one behind the bypass valve. That's going to be the short one right there. Now, I probably could have taken off that hose already, um, but I can do that next. Basically now you just give this a little tug. If it's tight, you can get a hammer and tap on this, but most of the time, if you just give it a little wiggle, there she goes. You can see it separated there. Take our sensor off of the bottom here, and I'll go ahead and 
take a screwdriver and take this hose off at the top. This sensor here is fairly easy. There's just a clip on the back side of it. You want to push it, push the clip that way towards the fan and pull down. Come on out of there. Oh, there we go. You can see it there. That's the clip I was pushing on right there. Just use a flathead. Uh, but you could also use a nut driver. These are normally like eight millimeter, uh, seven or six millimeter, depending on the clamp you have on there. Ah, there we go. And our housing is out. Let's put it on the bench. This is what she looks like when it's out. Um, flip it over here. You can see. Uh, Missing a lot of the gasket, which is probably stuck on the, the engine block. But that's where our gasket is going to go. And there's our thermostat right there. You should be able to just pull on it. Get that up out of there. Just like that. And, of course, you want to match it up to your new one. And make sure that they look the same. And they do look the same. So we're good there. Alright, so now what you want to do... We're going to uh, just get a little razor knife and a wire brush, and we're going to get this gasket off and just clean this whole side up. All right, I got everything scraped off. I uh, used a wire brush on here, got it pretty clean. I blew some air through here. Um, so next up, this is where your, uh, your actual bypass um, o-ring would go. It's actually like a metal sleeve, and there's uh, rubber at the bottom of it. Uh, if yours isn't leaking or if you're not having a problem with it, <clears throat> I would go ahead and leave that alone. They are a little tricky and a little finicky to get out of there. And if you destroy this, your bypass valve that you have to plug back in is always going to leak there. And you're going to end up having to get a new housing or whatever, and it's just going to be a nightmare. So um, mine was not leaking from here. I put it back together. I will definitely check that and make sure... <laughs> Um, cause anytime you disconnect something, put something back, you always take chance of damaging it, but we're going to leave that one in there rather than try to pry it out. And we're going to go ahead with the assembly here. So we're back out here now. <clears throat> the, uh, the base where your housing is going to adhere to the block here is, well, pretty bad shape. We got a lot of gaskets still stuck on there. There's some rust. This is all going to have to be cleaned up really good first. So I'm going to have to get my razor knife and get a wire wheel and spend some time out here and clean this up uh, but you definitely want to close up this gap here uh, this goes into the block remember so you definitely do not want anything going into the block so we're going to try to uh we're going to close this off and i'm not going to film it but i'm very, pretty much just going to sit here and scrape and try to get this whole base clean before i go ahead and put that housing back on there all right i got the base clean we can go ahead and start putting this back together all right so now when putting the uh gasket on uh, a lot of people ask this question should i put some rtv sealant on there with the gasket or just the rtv sealant or just the gasket well every situation is different if you're dealing with a case where maybe you had leaks coming from your housing and maybe there's some imperfections that you need to fill then typically, yeah, you can put some uh, RTV on there and the gasket. I would recommend a small skim coat of it and the gasket, and uh, you should be just fine. If you don't have any issues with this, using the gasket is just fine. Just to be on the safe side, you can, I, I mean, I would just put a nice little skim coat of it on there anyway, just to make this seal better. The only downfall of that is if you ever take this off again, well, then you're scraping all of that sealant and stuff off. So I got a tube of this Permatex. This is a, this Max, Max Torque Optimum High Temperature uh, Gasket Maker here. I'm going to put a very, very, and I mean very small skim coat on here. All right, so I got a nice little skim coat on there. Not too much, not too messy. And uh, we'll go ahead and we'll place our thermostat in there that and then we can go ahead and place our gasket on top and uh she's ready to go ready to go back on the machine
All right, I got my bolts back through the holes. Remember, the long bolt's going to go through the top. The shorter bolt's going to go through the bottom. And be careful when you're pushing those bolts through that you don't tear the gasket. Actually, turn it uh, clockwise and let it screw itself through the gasket. Because if you go push them through, you might tear this gasket, and then you got to go get a new one. All right, so we're going to go ahead and position this back up in there. All right. And just kind of... Turn the nuts a little bit by hand just so this thing doesn't fall out. Get the bottom one threaded in here. I don't know if that top one's lining up or not. Yeah, it's just a little tight to turn because you got this little canal here that prevents you from turning that, but uh, it's on there. All right, so at this point, guys, you can go ahead and tighten everything back up. Uh, what I would do is um, I would do the bypass valve last. Because remember, you have that bolt that the, that um, that valve when it was in, it was hiding that bolt behind it. So you want to you want to put that valve in last, and be careful when you're pushing that back in. You don't want to break that. Uh, you could put a little bit of oil around it and, and just slowly try to work it back in there, but it'll go back in. It'll push back in. All right. Uh, don't forget hook up your sensor, the wire you disconnected, the radiator hose, and the top bracket to the bypass valve that we did first. All right, and that's how you do a thermostat, guys, on a John Deere 310G. Hopefully this helps. Hit subscribe below, guys. Give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment, and I'll see you next time.